It led to papers like this, again, using cutting edge molecular biology techniques. Uh, Raj Sohal uh, in Dallas showed that he could introduce extra copies of the superoxide dismutase gene into a primitive life form, fruit flies, and they would live 30% longer. So what he was doing was modifying this ratio that Dr. Cutler had found, more SOD with a given constant amount of, of free radical production would increase the lifespan of an organism. Even more dramatically, this has been shown in mice. This was uh, four years ago in the journal Science. Really the same experiment. Scientists introduced additional copies of a gene that led to more catalase, a different antioxidant enzyme, in the mitochondria of mice. And the mice lived about 25% longer. So again, here's superoxide dismutase, here's this free radical at the very interface of longevity, as well as the diseases I mentioned, the huge ones, heart disease, cancer, um, uh, inflammatory diseases. Well, once scientists recognize that indeed uh, a process is involved uh, in diseases, the next question is, can they be fixed? Can you manipulate somehow this information and alleviate some of the processes either that cause disease or accompany disease? And in the case of free radical biology, uh, SOD was kind of the focus. Um, I've talked only about SOD, briefly about catalase up to this point. And a point I'm going to be making soon is that they are not alone. Your body has a whole battery of antioxidant enzymes. They are two of the ones that were studied most intensely in the beginning, but by no means the whole solution. But when scientists began to say, can this SOD become a drug, can it be used, uh, papers began to appear like these two one in circulation research, and I'll kind of translate the titles here for you, canine myocardial reperfusion injury. This is a, a model in a dog of a heart attack. And when a heart attack occurs, there's an area of the heart that's affected that essentially can die, um, reducing the function of the heart. If it has a big dead patch uh, on the side of a, a ventricle in the heart, you can't pump blood anymore. That infarct, which is the mass of tissue that dies, was reduced by the administration of superoxide dismutase and catalase. So that here, using these two enzymes as drugs in a laboratory model of a heart attack, indeed, they reduced the effect of the heart attack. The second paper is very similar, um, using catalase alone to reduce the size of an infarct in a pig model, porcine model uh, of ischemia reperfusion. Papers like this began to appear in many labs around the con country. My own lab was, was doing similar things, and maybe at least a dozen other laboratories. In, <clears throat> in the fall of 1986, the American Heart Association had held its annual meeting in Dallas. There was a session uh, where paper after paper of exactly this kind of study w was presented. In attendance at that Heart Association meeting was a, a science reporter from the Wall Street Journal. They cover those meetings because they're always looking for new, new information about new drugs and new studies. Uh, the, the Wall Street Journal reporter was named Jerry Bishop, and he had stumbled into this session. He said there were 24 concurrent sessions at this meeting probably hundreds and hundreds of studies being presented, usually 15 minutes at a time. And in this session, he heard paper after paper talking about superoxide dismutase, reducing infarct size after heart attack. And he said, what is this superoxide dismutase? So he went back to the Wall Street Journal and he started digging around. And that digging led him to me because I was the guy who discovered this enzyme. And so, uh, he attended a meeting, again, just up the road in La Jolla on the UCSD campus there. 
a meeting about oxidative stress. He was in attendance and he said, can we go outside? I'd like to interview you. I'm from the Wall Street Journal. And so he did. We talked for probably an hour or so under a tree in that beautiful setting. And a couple of days later, a front page story appeared on the Wall Street Journal. A tale from the lab. <laughs> a long winding course of medical research leads to a breakthrough. Well, he wrote this um, because he had attended that session at the American Heart Association. He wanted to figure out what is this about. And he did a really interesting uh, story tracing this back through many of my colleagues who were quoted in the story. And this got the attention of the media in a big way. Scientists don't usually force themselves onto the medium. They wait, the media, they wait until their, their science is discovered in meetings such as the American Heart Association. When uh, the Wall Street Journal publishes a front page story, about something, it's only a matter of time. In fact, it was only two days until the really major media discovered it. I was in Mobile, Alabama at the time, and so the next day I was on the front page of the Mobile Press and the Mobile Register, the two newspapers serving uh, that rather small city. Uh, I had my first press conference. The guy there on my right is the president of the University of South Alabama, who was now my best friend. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, the, the press realized this, and in fact, the Wall Street Journal had called it a medical breakthrough. It wasn't quite that yet because there were still steps to be made. And in fact, those steps turned out to be difficult. Often things work really well in a lab. They don't translate well uh, when you try to turn them into a drug or turn them into uh, human uh, clinical medicine. And such was the case with SOD. The desire was there, let's cash in on this enzyme's ability to protect us from free radicals that are caused in cancer, heart disease, stroke, all of those diseases. Still stumbling block.